Hi guys, as you can guess, I am a huge fan of the Alien franchise, just like many of you guys out there watching. One thing that I love is the Aliens Expanded Universe. Perhaps the best part of that Expanded Universe is the comic books, graphic novels, and books that cover stories outside of what we know from the movies. It's here where we get awesome stories like Aliens Genocide and the Aliens vs Predator series. Of all of the comics, one series stood out to me, and I even remember buying each issue as it came out way back in 1991. The series in question here is Aliens Genocide. It was a great story that showed us fans what an alien versus alien fight would be like. And I don't just mean one on one, but two competing hives battling it out for supremacy. We finally got that story with Genocide, so let's take a look at the four-part series from Dark Horse Comics. They use different colors to tell the difference between the two hives of aliens. The writers of the story admitted that they are most likely the same color in reality, but that they smell different or something else that would let the aliens know that the drone in front of them is from a competing hive. They state in the bug hunt section of the comic where people can write in and talk to the creators that the colors are only there to help the reader tell the difference. That said, I do think a red alien is awesome looking and the color difference really doesn't hurt the story either way so it doesn't really matter if you think they're red or not. Another point to mention is that by the time of Genocide in the Aliens comic series, the Earth has already been invaded by the aliens, but it's not completely taken over. There are still groups of humans on the planet that are there fighting aliens. There is a lot more info and backstory to cover, but I'm hoping that if you guys like this video series, I'll go back and cover all of the comics in the same fashion so I don't want to give out spoilers and ruin future videos. Now we pick up the series on the Xenomorph home planet, or at least the planet is referred to as the birthplace of the demons. Now you have to remember that almost all the comics are based on or following aliens and not alien. Because of this, the queen is used in most of the comic series and the aliens behave like they did in the aliens movie, creating large hive structures in order to support a queen. We are told that something has happened to the Queen and that her royal guard is moving rapidly in order to establish a new alien queen. Due to the confusion of what has happened from the last comics on the homeworld, separate groups of drones and royal guard set off to create a new queen and we end up with rival queens and rival hives of aliens. Now many people have questioned this shot from the comic here and asked what the hell is this? In the bug hunt section in the back of the comic, somebody asked about this panel and said, what is that? Is it a mutated queen? And the writers simply replied, yep. So you can almost ignore this shot or just say that that's a mid state of a queen and that when she grows full, she's gonna look normal. Anyway, a new queen is now in control of a second hive, a red queen, if you will. And with the first order from the red queen, she issues an attack on the original alien hive who unbeknownst to them are now ruled by a newly formed queen as well. We even get this awesome shot here that shows us how in the comics a queen is made using the royal jelly stored in the five connected sacks here with what looks like a royal guard alien being used to morph into a queen. So one main constant throughout all of the alien movies and in the expanded universe is the evil company. In the movies, it's Wayland Corp, or later on, Wayland yutani Corporation. In the comics, the company isn't always Wayland, but they're usually just as evil, if not worse, stopping at nothing to get alien tech, no matter how many people die, or what planet, including Earth, gets destroyed in the process. What we find out here is that a company has found a way to make a drug containing the royal jelly from the aliens. In humans, it acts as a super steroid of sorts, allowing people to do things way beyond what their normal bodies are capable of. The drug in question is called Xenozip, so they're not really trying hard to cover up the source of the super drug, but that may be done just so readers get right off where it's from. We pick up here now with a race, and it turns out that one of the sprinters is actually on the Xenozip drug, 
Not only does it make him run so fast that he flat out clobbers the competition, but he's moving so quickly that he doesn't have time to turn and ends up going right through a wall here. And that doesn't stop him. He ends up splattering all over this huge weight bearing column inside the building. Now, of course, the military finds out about this and they want to use it for their soldiers. They end up testing it on a soldier and having him face off in hand-to-hand -to -hand combat with six or more other non-drug soldiers. And not only does this guy beat all of them up, but he ends up killing them, ripping arms and legs off, punching right through people. The guy ends up going berserk and they end up having to use massive power to eventually kill the enraged soldier. Even blowing his arm off doesn't do anything to slow him down. Of course, seeing this only makes the military guys want the drug even more. We now pick up with the company in question and we learn that they are called Neo Farm and that they are led by the company's owner, Daniel Grant. We see him going into their aliens testing lab to talk with Wickoff, who is the lead scientist on their aliens research. We get to see the true nature of Daniel and his company here as he attacks and nearly strangles Wickoff, all because the drug is making certain people crazy and they see that as an imperfect drug. As it turns out though, the drug's imperfections are due to the fact that the company doesn't have access to enough royal jelly, and because of that, they had to synthetically remake the jelly ingredients, and that has caused a bad reaction to these synthetic or fake replacement drug chemicals. As you can guess, the company wants more of the real royal jelly, and in the comic, they have one source, the alien homeworld. We then pick up with Mr. Grant meeting with the colonial marines to see how he can get more of the royal jelly. They state that the aliens when on their homeworld are more passive than aliens on other planets. It is said that due to the fact that aliens have natural predators on their home planet, that they're more docile and easier to deal with in that area. Now the military, they actually want the synthetic drug version because they want all of the rage that they can get out of their soldiers. So what they end up doing is striking a deal with Neo Farm that says that if the Marines will make an expedition to the home planet to get more royal jelly for Neo Farm to use in the standard drug that is sold to just people in general, then they'll continue to make the synthetic form that causes people to go crazy exclusively for the military to use. So with the deal struck, we end this issue with Daniel Grant loading up with a group of Marines and setting off for the alien homeworld. And that's where we're going to end off with this one. We'll come back for the next episode where we'll pick up with issue two of four of the Aliens Genocide series. Let me know what you guys think about this comic review series, because if you guys do like it, I really would love to cover all of the Aliens comics, but we'll see. It just depends on what kind of feedback we get from this. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you like this video, if you could leave a thumbs up, it helps so much to let me know if you guys are interested in this series. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, why not for all the aliens goodness to come? Otherwise, take care everybody, and I will see you next time.